High-scoring Valley attack has attracted high visibility and increased attendance. Defense-oriented Alcorn, like Valley, is unbeaten after four games. There is talk of moving the November 3rd meeting between the two to Jackson. Valley scoring like 60 points a game. Alcorn ranks really high in the nation in total defense. The Gunslinger, he wanted to win. Uh, the Godfather wanted to win. So it was, uh, we knew that it was going to be a battle. If it was an accurate body count, I think it would still be the most attended athletic event in Mississippi history. The Godfather, the Gunslinger. What a battle. Okay, let's start off. Okay, <laughs> here we go. For Mississippi Valley, truly out of this world. Willie Todd has thrown 43 touchdown passes this season. 21 of them going to Jerry Rice. College football top receiver with 86 catches. <laughs> but you know, it was a 6 and 0 team going against 7 and 0 team, and everybody had. Uh, a lot of publicity in the league and in HBCU. And we really want to outshine Rice and Todd because that's all they talked about. This team cannot lose with the Godfather and the A team on their side. What, Valley was scoring 60 points a game? 63 to be exact. <laughs> if, if there was a coach today scoring 60 points a game in any, you know, Division I sport realm, right, like he'd be the hottest thing on the market. Genius, a boy wonder. Just one of the most creative and brightest minds Valley in football. Valley Attack has attracted high visibility and increased attendance. Over 40,000 at Memorial Stadium last month for the Jackson State game, and an even better draw looms near. Everybody wanted to see this. Everybody wanted to see them. The Godfather. Gunslinger. Godfather. Gunslinger. Godfather versus the Gunslinger. Cooley has done at Mississippi Valley State is nothing short of remarkable. They're using the quartz pack out there. Very new formation in football. Cooley's got an explosive offense. But we did what we said we were going to do. Just play pressure defense. Coach Cooley, when we talk about being ahead of your time, just one of the most creative and brightest minds in football. Well, I put my hat on for my fans. Let them know that Gunslinger, he's not gone yet. The nickname of Gunslinger, Roscoe Nant. He said, Coach, you got your hat on. Why don't we nickname him? Nickname him what? The Gunslinger. 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 He was ahead of his time. Around the NFL, everybody's running the same stuff that Mississippi Valley State was running back then. And so when Coach came over the offense, he said, well, why, why we go back in the huddle? Why don't we just do this on the line? And we thought he was just joking. Coach was like, I want to try this out in the game. It was our very first game running the offense. We beat them 86 to nothing. He came out with formations that I had never seen. Hey, look, look, look up top, we got yeah. four, yeah. four, <laughs> four now. Come on, man. Then you got a single down, down, down bottom here. I think that's the reason why uh, Bill Walsh wanted uh, the gunslinger to come here to San Francisco, you know, be, just to pick his brain. And he, he said, well, I'm going to start using some of this stuff, and he did. We had no idea that the impact that we were making on the game itself. You know, we wanted to do something special at Mississippi Valley State University. Devils have been receiving glaring headlines for their offensive prowess. Alcorn has quietly been running up big scores as well. The Rays 44-16 winners over Southern Saturday. Surprise, surprise. At that time, Battle was averaging 69 points a game, and our defense was the number one defense in the nation. And uh, we wouldn't get no recognition. Marino Chasm was he was a defensive guru. At Alcorn playing defense, we only had one scheme. All we did was play man to man. Zone when even in the vocabulary. Sometimes eight men, nine men on the line of scrimmage. You're gonna stay on this man wherever he goes, he jumped the fence, you jump the fence. He goes to the restroom, you go to the restroom. You have him, period. The Godfather, I was wondering why they called him the Godfather until I went to Alcorn and I found out. Godfather with cash came from the gangster. All them gangsters in, in on TV. I do things that don't, other folks don't do. I say, you, you doggone right, cat. You do a lot of things other folks don't do. 
Cole Casimir is a funny guy. He always got that little talk. Well, I tell you, when we when we see you now, say like, we're not gonna take it easy on you. You know, it's just like working a seal meal. That hot lead don't know your name, brother. You know what I mean? You got to go to work every day. Coach Cooley really motivated with that cowboy hat on. He's going to have those cowboy boots on. And he's going to tell you what he's going to do. Kind of like Muhammad Ali. Coach Kaz was kind of a, he's going to tell you what he's going to do, but he kind of do it in a joking, in a manner. I think I had the best, the best uh, talk I ever had with him. It was before the Valley game. And uh, he was uh, he explained a lot of things about life to me, and because uh, we had to go meet the mayor to discuss that game being moved to that Sunday. Both teams, both Alcorn State and Mississippi Valley State, are undefeated. The game was supposed to be played at Itabina, and I kept thinking, man, it's just a shame that stadium sat at that time. It sat about 8,000 people. If that game were to be played in Jackson we'd have a crowd of over 60,000, easy. If the game has shifted, the date must be moved as well because Memorial Stadium already has game scheduled for the afternoon and night of November 3rd. Uh, we would have to play it on a Sunday. For us to play on Sunday was just, just unheard of. You know, that's NFL time. Barney Poole, who was the stadium manager, said, well, as far as I know, there's no state law against playing a game on Sunday. And you know, Coach Cassim used to have this saying in, in Mississippi, everybody know that we go to church on Sunday. But when you play at Alcorn, you know, it's, it's, it's the, that's the holy time. No, I did not uh, think it was going to be as big as it was. No, no way. No way. I don't think I could have imagined that, no. <laughs> 70,000, 80,000 people, they man. Say so it was like 65, was cool. but it was like, it's 65 seats, but it's yeah. like, it's 60 outside or 30 outside. And in the walkways, that was full. Coming out, you you had to compose yourself. I would say it was it was just like when I played in those Super Bowls. Woo, man! You talking about people from every walk of life? Somewhere between 20 and 25 percent of the crowd was white people. <laughs> that had never happened before. Here we are, 1980 Mississippi, where it's only you know just under 70 percent of the folks who support school integration but they're still willing to show up to a football game by two historically black colleges and universities. If it was an accurate body count, I think it would still be the most attended athletic event in Mississippi history. And it wasn't Ole Miss in, 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 in Mississippi State. It was all corn and Mississippi Valley. So you were able to block all of that out there. I didn't, I got worried about you, man. <laughs> Could be some sort of dream matchup back in the secondary between I Colt, the all-time 1AA interception leader, and Jerry Rice, the leading receiver in the country. It will be an interesting matchup. The thing is predicated on the fact that uh, Alcorn is able to affect a good pass rush. Alcorn will play you man for man and cover the spot rush. As a kid growing up, I was like this nerdy guy. I just had big hands, I had big feet, had no intention on playing uh, sports. Yeah, I would have been a late bloomer. Because high school, I think I went to school, I was 5'3", 96 pounds. One day I decided to skip class, and the principal walked up behind me, noticed I could run really fast. He wanted me to go out for the football team. Didn't have a big high school career. I think I might have played one or two football games. So uh, I went out for the football team. So I go out for the football team. So when I was cut, I had two decisions to come home and work the railroad or go back to school. I had a decision to make and I decided to stay and uh, after that, everything is history. You know, I, I held you a little bit in the end zone one time. You showed oh, me Oh man, too. you held me all day. What are you talking about, man? Man, I held you like uh, <laughs> yeah. one time. <laughs> One time, yeah. One time, all right, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we had a holding call on the defense. We've got an automatic on the first down. That's a break right there, first and ten. Well, I knew that Isaac Hope, that, that, you know, he was the best defender. And it was going to be very challenging for me to, uh, you know, get open and, and make uh, catches. He got us towards the end, though, because I think they were in, like, a prevent defense. And he was just waiting for uh, Totten to uh, make that throw to the sidelines. 
Passing to right, intercepted. And touchdown. Real I couldn't shot. believe how you just cut underneath on me on that, but he did it in the second quarter too. And once you throw the hand out, he's not going. He's going to stop. Turn around. Almost intercepted. Drop. I told that is right. Could catch a BB at night. And he, he didn't catch but one touchdown against Hope. When you caught the ball in that game, one particular play come across the middle, when the ball was like that far off the ground, yeah. and you hadn't broke stride, and you, uh, today I can see it just as clear as day. Jerry's running full speed, the ball's low and behind him, and he reaches down with one hand, snags it, and keeps running. I've never seen anything like that. Look at this, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Pumps, fakes, throws, right. You, you really look forward to those type of battles, you know, because you know that you're going up against uh, one of the best, and it brings out the best in you. But this was our opportunity right here, this yeah. show. Yeah. Basically, we're showcasing right now. Right. You had a lot of guys who were really in the spotlight for the first time, you know. A lot of them, this was, you know, that kind of atmosphere. This was new, this was different. We were at lunch and, and uh, Richard Miles, the quarterback, you know, he came up to the defensive back table. He's like, hey man, can y'all hold him to 28? I said, yeah, we got 28. He said, okay, we're gonna get him because I'm gonna score 42. <laughs> what was the score? Tell you what, 42 to 28 is your final score. <laughs> I mean, believe me, that shows how these guys are pumped up yeah. because to get Marino Castle that high off the ground <laughs> takes an effort. <laughs> right. To watch Perhaps you guys carry win. him off the field and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> watch me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't give Coach K. So. <laughs> what we found out on that Sunday was Alcorn had a damn good offense, too. And it's imperative as we talk about the game that we share and we drive awareness to not only the historically black colleges, but the men who didn't have an opportunity like some of us did. In one season, you know, I, I threw 58 touchdowns. Uh, you didn't have many quarterbacks, black quarterbacks in the league. You had only three. I felt I had the ability to do it, but just didn't have the opportunity uh, to do it at the time. Richard Miles, quarterback, was terrific. Perry Qualls, running back, I think he scored four touchdowns in the game. Probably one of the most under-publicized football stars in our state's history. God bless his soul. Rest in peace, Perry Qualls. I think Perry, they talked a lot about me at the end of the game, but I think they should have been talking about Perry Qualls, to be honest with you. And uh, I saw Emmy Smith run, but that day, I looked like I had saw Emmett before. How Perry was running the ball that day. We'll take a break. We can't talk about football, the game of football, without acknowledging the greats from our historically black colleges and university. You know, without Archie Cooley, man, I would have never uh, did the things that I did in professional football. Those were legends, and, and you look back, they, they were just coaches in our minds. We just had to play. But now, years, 40 years ago, we were like, wow, man, that, that was really something. It was really big. Capstone had a way of beating Archie Cooley because he beat him the most than anybody in college football. And, and Capstone is gone. But if I had to say anything good about it, I work for him, I admire Carlson, and I think he's one of the better black coaches ever put on the coach's uniform. So let me take this time to say, Reno, wherever you are, I know you're working, and you're trying to be the best you can be. And one day, we'll meet again. You take care.